This is the best hut, no doubt about it. This is unbelievable. One of the greatest hats I have ever come across. We've got a Super Bowl Championships hat. This is a Green Bay Packers, brand new with tag, logo athletic, 1997 official locker room hat. It's quite a strange feeling. I don't have to go out thrifting on this Wednesday morning. And that's what I'd always do. I'd go out thrifting, looking for items, try and get 15 a day every day. But we just bought so much off Jesse last week that we've actually got enough stock to last us through the entire week this week. So I can definitely go ahead and focus on some other things today, which I'm definitely going to do. We've got so much to do outside of thrifting. It's just such a big relief to know that Courtney's sorted, um, you know, for her couple of days that she's got rest uh, left in this week. So um, I do have, having said that, I've got an allotment of hats that I bought, vintage hats, some really cool hats. I think there are about 60 in total from the US that have been shipped in and I'm, I'm picking them up today and I'm gonna take you through those hats uh, in today's video. And I'm actually gonna be giving away um, three of them for half price because that's part of our Black Friday run that we're doing this week. We're giving away three items um, on both Instagram and on YouTube and I'm gonna do three hats in this video. So stick around for that to find out which ones are up for grabs for cheap. Um, I'm going to go through the sales figures, no doubt about it. I really want to keep you guys updated towards our $13,000 goal. Um, I'm going to go through some sales that came in overnight that I thought were pretty cool as well. And um, we've got some questions as well from you guys. I put it up on Instagram as a bit of a poll. And I said, what questions have you got? Oh, I'm happy to answer them. And in this vlog today, uh, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to basically rattle off a few. Uh, we won't do all of them because there were quite a number of questions that came in. Um, but I'm definitely going to answer a few that I thought were pretty good for the wider audience to get an answer from. So, massive day. I think we'll kick things off with, well, a bit of a look back at the, uh, the sales numbers over the last two days. We'll just go from there. So Courtney's walked in a new person today because she's feeling better. Just need, let me have my lolly. Have, a, have your lolly. But you've, got a, you've got a whoop band. I do. This just came in the mail. Everyone knows, well, everyone should know that we're obsessed with the diary of a CEO, Stephen Bartlett. Well, I don't think that people do know. Why? I don't think we've spoken about it. Oh, true. Maybe we just speak about it, but we are literally obsessed with him. Yeah. He is, like, so amazing. We uh, caught you listen to it when um, when you're listing. I listen to his podcast all the time. We watch his YouTube vlogs. We watch book. He, his book. He was on the actual Whoop podcast because oh, he's an they, investor. they would have known because I gave it to you for your birthday. Did that oh, go yeah. in? yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't even know if that made it in. I can't remember. Maybe not. Anyway. But if you don't know him, you should go watch, listen to him and watch him. Have a look at it. So it's like... That looks slick. It's like a fitness watch, but instead it's like very, very in detailed data of like your sleep, your recovery, like after exercising, your heart, everything, like oxygen levels. It's like very in detailed. And more importantly, Steve Bartlett is an investor. He is. And in the company. And he, his his rule is life. What's it called? Rule is life. His life is ruled by this. So I was like, you know what? Well, it changed his just, life. Yeah, and like anyone that talks about it or has known of it agrees. And like a lot of people that aren't even like investors or anything in the in the company really, really use it. A lot of athletes and stuff. Not that I'm an athlete, but I'll get there. You were saying you felt quite. Uh... I just feel like high and mighty today with yeah, that. Yeah, I have my life together now, but I don't. <laughs> but like, I'm part of like an elite group. <laughs> If you've got the whoop band on, yeah. you are in the top echelon. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. Well, I've got to get myself a whoop band from the sounds of it. Uh, mm. Take that. Oh, can also, too, we, we've got to touch on that as well because you were saying that you were just chewing on a lolly. Mm. It wasn't just any lolly. No. It was your your secret listing fuel. It Guys, is. Um, we've, got, we've had this for quite a while now. I'll turn this fan off because I don't know if that's annoying or not in the audio. Um, we've had this for quite a while. I say quite a while. It's probably only a couple of weeks. Yeah. Courtney's secret listing fuel. We all know that listing can get, well, I don't know what word you'd describe it as, but it can get a bit monotonous. It's pretty repetitive. It's the same thing. But when you've got yourself a bit of secret listing oh. fuel, you turn into an absolute beast. Uh, and then when you eat this listing fuel and you've got a whoop band. It's like. I think you might be able to list doubly quick. eBay will blow up. eBay will blow up as a result. <laughs> um, we've got the sour worms. Yeah. So, it's bad things to eat them all. That's why I just don't buy it. Well, but do you know I've eaten half of these? Yeah, no, I can tell. I bought a yeah, <laughs> I bought a whole bag, and I was like, well, I can't put the whole bag in, so well, I ended up eating half of it. Yeah. So, 
It's usually sour, isn't it? Yeah. Because you love sour lollies, right? Yeah, I do. So I've got you the right ones there. But I'd love to know in the comments, if you were to have... Do you have any listing fuel? Um, Courtney's obviously got the sour worms. Um, if so, what is it? What's everyone's favourite sour lolly, I reckon? Oh, yeah, put that in there too. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's go... Yeah, we digress. Let's go through some sales numbers over the last two days. Uh, we did $541 on Monday. So in the Monday vlog, Courtney was listing away. Uh, we had all that stock that we were saying that we we're going to list up. Well, we got 15 listings out and we got 541 in revenue. And then the next day when Courtney wasn't in, even though we had 15 listings go up, we fell in revenue down to $285. So what that meant is the 381 daily average for the month that we've always been on has remained with those two sales days. So the situation's the same. We're on $383 for an average and we're $50 off pace. Uh, but we're only now two days away from the sale, this big Black Friday sale that we're harping on about all week um, and sort of building towards. So look, I'm feeling pretty confident if we can hit our goal that we spoke of uh, in, in Monday's vlog, which is $4,000 over Black Friday in four days, that means we've got five days where we need to do $1,000 additional in revenue to hit our target, which is an average of $200 a day. So I really do think that we're gonna be able to hit it if we can nail the Black Friday goal that we've got in place. Um, so we've got $123 so far today, $285 from yesterday. This is everything here um, that was overnight. Um, and a really good sale here actually to, to take you through first of all is this one, which is one that you listed up Courtney on Monday. Yeah. Blue Healers. Yeah. Really, really good show if you can find it in its entirety. I would say if you were to find any number of seasons of this show um, to go ahead and pick it up because if you search Blue Healer comps on eBay, it's quite significant. And you can see here, we've got a, a real mixed bag. We've got yeah. the complete second season part two, second season part one, so that's complete of part two. But then there's a, a just a season three part one and then there's just a season 11 part one. So they're not even complete seasons. And we were still able to get these four DVDs selling a bundle for $35. And it actually brings me to a question that we got asked in our Q&A, which was, um, what happens when you find multiple DVDs? Do you go ahead and list them up or do you wait to get a complete set? Do not wait. You go ahead and list up whatever you've got. And then when you go out thrifting next, you can search your active listings and you can go, what have we got for Blue Healers? You type Blue Healers into your active listings and it will show you that you've got this listing here. Then you might find season 10 when you're out in the thrift store and you're like, great, I can go home, we can amend the listing and we can add in another one and we can top it up. Um, and then chances are, the more that you're able to top up your listings and revise your listings, you will need to take new photos. But the more that you revise and the more that you add to your collections, the quicker they're going to go on to sell. Um, so luckily for us, uh, this Blue Healers was a 48-hour turnaround, uh, and we're able to get $35 for that. Um, we were doing, and we will be doing again today, a bit of a sale, a bit of a promotion around Black Friday for you guys, the Instagram and YouTube audience, both social platforms that we're heavily focused on. Uh, and this was a YouTube giveaway. Um, Courtney spoke about this one. You pronounced it beautifully. <laughs> no, you, I did not. You, you did. Um, Grand Prix. You noticed how when you said Grand Prix in that video last last uh, on Monday, yeah, there was zero people giving you a hard time about it. Yeah. As soon as I say Stussy or Stussy, I get blown up in the comments. Maybe they didn't listen to what I said. Oh, I reckon they were listening. <laughs> oh, you couldn't miss it the way you pronounced Grand Prix. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> um, so that was nice of them, I will say that. You can yeah. pick on me, just don't pick on Courtney. No, you can pick on me. Nah, don't pick on me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, anyway, long, long story short, this sold for $25, which was the price that we were advertising it for. Um, so that will be a lovely gift for somebody for Christmas, I believe is the reason why they're buying that. 1993 vintage hat should have sold for 50 or 60 on eBay. It didn't. So we can facilitate that to somebody through YouTube. Um, now I wanted to have a chat about this, but I'm not going to talk about it for very long. I just want to show you and highlight the fact that they are still selling. We've got big bundles uh, and we're doing big, cheap not worth anything video game bundles. This is a big Wii set. Uh, we got $45 for this. Um, so yeah, definitely keep doing your bundles. I'm telling you all to be doing that because they are converting. If you work that out, I don't know how many games are there. There's like 10 games. It's like $4.50 a game. But you only have to pay one postage cost, right? Um, which one next, Corny? You choose it. Anatomy. Anatomy, $29 sale price. 
on this one here. So we've got Anatomy for Beginners, a brand new sealed copy. Couldn't even remember where I bought this one, but a $29 sale price is fantastic for a single DVD. Uh, we're gonna go and put them over the uh, $15 purchase price into one of these. So that one gets the tracked postage treatment and we'll whack it into there and that'll be, that'll be fantastic. So yeah, uh, Anatomy, I just wanted to put that one in there because it was a, quite a high single DVD price. Um, this one was a high one as well. We, get, we need to, Courtney, focus on Blu-rays more next year. Mm -mm. We really do because they sell well. This one here was 29 as well. Yeah, about. I'm pretty sure it was 29. Comps will say it. Uh, but it was quite a high one. Can't, can't remember where I picked that one up either. But, yeah, you know, good. You buy these for like a dollar or two. Yeah. And they convert into $58. Yeah, it's so good. Two bucks into 58. Talk about profit margins. You won't find a better profit margin in this eBay game than, than DVDs and Blu-rays. Mm. Uh, now, another question that came through in the Q&A that I put up on Instagram was around Pokemon cards and more importantly, the big buyout that we had when I was in America, those big bad boys. Mm. Um, no updates for you as of yet, but I will say that they are still trickling away and they are coming through for some really good sales. This one here was actually bought off a private pick. Um, this is Blastoise. This is the celebrations year. Um, so this is actually a more modern card, but we got a $16 sale price for that one there. Um, so we're going to do our standard Pokemon card packaging uh, to get that one sent off safely. We yet to have a damaged Pokemon card, Courtney. I know. It's very good. Yeah. You're doing a good job with those. <laughs> uh, but this one, Dragonair, this one was number 18 of 102. So this is, a, this is the very first ever edition of Pokemon cards. So anything with a 102 down in the bottom corner can tell you immediately that it's a base set card. Uh, it's Dragonair, 18102. Guess how much that sold for? 30. It was listed for 35, sold it for 25 on a best offer. Yeah, that's good. 25. It's a common card, but what I will say about it, Courtney, I don't know if you can zoom in here. There's no shadow there, right? And that, I don't know if you know, oh, you do know that because yeah. you've listed so many. Yeah. But that means it's shadowless, and shadowless is always worth more because of the printing volume was less for shadowless Pokemon cards. You'll see the others have got shadows on them. Um, so it's a shadowless. Uh, Dragonair is a popular Pokemon. Number 18102, $25. So that was cool. A couple of Pokemon cards. And then the last one as well is just another pair of shoes. Uh, so these are a really nice pair of Air Max. Uh, they are just a size 7 youth, and that's why they've taken a little bit to sell. Uh, but we've got a $35 sale price. We're doing, as I've harped on a little bit, we're doing 15% off all of our shoes um, and accessories. That's still running until tomorrow night. Um, so this one was initially $50. I think it went down to $42 with the sale. And then I took a best offer further to that for $35. So pretty cheap. But I, I mean, I would have paid... Well, look at that. It says, it says I paid $25. No, you did not. I did not. Yeah. I did not. No. I don't know what I paid. I think it was a flea market buy. And yeah. they had bought it for $25. Mm. Oh, they took a loss. Yeah. I wouldn't have paid $25 for it. No. But anyway, $35 worth of sale price on a pair of shoes. So, that's everything. These are just some bread and butters. Nothing really to report on there. Courtney's gonna go ahead and fix that up. And then Courtney is gonna be doing her 60 because the number that we need to list for the rest of this week is 60 items. And I reckon the 60 items are gonna be found in here. I actually found an old iPod. Yeah, I saw that the other day. That won't work, surely. No. It looks pretty, pretty ratty. But you can sell these as is. Yeah. So we'll do that in, as an as is nano. It's only a two gigabyte. It won't be worth anything actually. No. Yeah. But it's all of these that we haven't even we've forgotten to get to, Courtney. No. Oh. Those are the really expensive transformers that we picked up in the other video. Why aren't they listed? Well, because we got all this so quickly. I should be saying that to you. <laughs> Why haven't you listed it? They were last week, weren't they? Yeah, they exactly right. They were last week. We don't we don't wait too long. Anyway, so Courtney's doing that. Um these were some Instagram promotions. So we're doing a promo on Instagram where they can buy that, they can buy this, and they can buy these blazer mids. And we're doing every single day on Instagram, 50% off. So if you're not following our Instagram, uh, do it right now, at the Aussie Flipper. Uh, we've got some really good Black Friday sales going on Instagram, as well as YouTube, a little bit later in the video. Now, the other thing that I was working on corner yesterday was, mm. have a look at it, the Dymo's out. So we've got the 5XL. Yeah. Um, it's not set up and working yet. I think we, what we've got to do is we've got to try and pair it um, to this laptop 
might be a little task that we can work on right now. I might just take this off camera, but guys, uh, I've had this for so long and I've just been using the Epson printer, but I do think it's definitely worthwhile going and grabbing one of these. Um, you can use the 5XL or the 4XL. Uh, we use the 5XL. Um, they are quite expensive, but I definitely think it's worthwhile having. Um, we just need to work out how to connect it. Whoop we'll changes everything. Post is pretty much pretty much done. However, we're gonna go and get some postage supplies, don't we? What do we need? Yes, we need excuse me. Small satchels. Small satchels? Um stamps. Stamps. Yeah, we're all out of stamps, aren't we? Yes. Butcher's paper. Butcher's paper. We literally oh yeah. We're forever doing this, guys. We're down to this much. We get butcher's paper from Bunnings Warehouse, so I'm gonna run out to Bunnings now and grab some more of that. This is pretty timely because it's Black Friday, so we should be stocking up on all this stuff. That was part of my to-do list as well as the Dymo, uh -huh. wasn't it? The Did... padded mailers, this is the size for that we used for the Pokemon cards. Oh yeah, we need them for the Pokemon cards. All right, padded mailers, envelopes, butcher's paper, small S satchels. That's Dance. everything. All right, Courtney, I'll be back. Yeah. See you later. See you soon. I've already forgotten what she asked me to get. I, I can guarantee you right now, I'm going to get back home. And I'm going to have forgotten something. I always forget. I've got a terrible memory. Uh, I'm pulling up here at the post office right now. Let's quickly do one of these viewer questions. Knock one of them out of the way. I'm going to do three, actually, in this video, I've decided. Um, so, let's have a look at the first one. That tied in really well, grabbing all of that postage uh, to the question that I got off Instagram, which was around ways to save money in your eBay business. And I think really a really important place to look is what is your, your biggest expense. And I think for a lot of you guys out there, it's going to be stock on hand. It's going to be what you buy for stock, inventory to sell. That's a really great way that you can actually save a lot of money. And for me this year, I've got a lot better at just buying better stuff. If I look at back what I bought three years ago, I've still got a lot of it sitting in the garage, if I'm brutally honest with you, because it was just such a bad buy that it was never going to go on to sell. And what, what is ultimately occurring there is you're just tying up money, really valuable money that could be spent on better things in your business or ultimately just better stock. Now, you know, three years ago, I couldn't have given myself that advice and then been able to action it because I didn't know what I was buying. I had to go through those lessons of just buying average old stock. And uh, you guys are too, if you're in your beginning stages. You're out there, you're, you're wanting to source stock, which is a good thing. Um, can be a bad thing if you're just overspending and you're just buying because you love to shop. That's a, that's a whole that's a whole another story. Um, but that is a great way that you can look at your business and go, right, how much money am I spending on stock every single month? Am I listing that stock that I'm buying? Chances are you're not, and there's your first area of concern. You're just sinking money into stock that's just sitting in the back corner of your room. That's why I'm so anti-death piles when you're a beginner. You've just got to be buying it and then listing it, and at least it stands a chance to sort of recoup back your money plus give you some profit. Um, so just buy better. Buy it by... And look, just because you're a beginner doesn't also mean that you're going to be in a position where you're going to have to go through those bad days like I did. You could just focus heavily on sell-through rate from day one and do it methodically on every single item that you purchase. And uh, you, would, you would have a much better result as an eBay seller and you would be more motivated to sell more too. Um, you know, there's, there's guys out there with 100 item eBay stores and they've got 200, 300 sold items in their 90 day total. They're saving money because they're saying no. And that's the biggest thing. They're saying no to a lot of stock out there when I think other people are saying yes. And that item is doing absolutely nothing for them. So that's a little rant around uh, stock purchasing and not wasting your money on dead stock. And um, the other one would be to look at your postage situation. How can you save money on postage? And the first one for us was we swapped to untracked envelopes a couple of months ago when Australia Post bumped up their postage rates by 10%. We were like, all right, well, how do we get back a little bit more off you? And it ended up being an untracked method of sending out postage, which has not been an issue at all for us. 
uh, since we adopted that in August. We've been able to sort of recoup some of that 10% that we lost uh, back by uh, saving a dollar or two here and there on, on tracked envelopes that we're not sending off for items under $15. We talk about that a lot on the channel, but it has been a really good savings method uh, that we've done over the last few months. So look at your biggest expenses. It'll, be, uh, it'll definitely be stock and it'll definitely be uh, postage. Courtney's my other very big expense, but that doesn't really relate to a lot of you guys out there, which I understand. And then just look at ways that you can reduce it. And hopefully those examples there are some good areas for you to be able to focus on as well. Just gonna go and get some butcher's paper and I'll answer the next question. Unbelievable. No butcher's paper in stock. The next question is actually relating to whatnot, which I thought was pretty interesting. I haven't spoken about whatnot since I was in the States a few months ago. So let's have a quick chat about that. So in short, I haven't heard anything about whatnot landing in Australia. When I was in America, um, I got in contact with a guy, a representative, partnerships guy with whatnot, and he said that they're gonna go into Europe, parts of Europe, and then they've got Australia on their radar. Um, so the business does want to get over to Australia, and I, I cannot wait, I cannot wait until they do, um, because I've got a social media presence, and I'm comfortable speaking on camera, and that is ultimately what you need to be successful on whatnot. Um, if you've got a social media presence, you've just got more people to communicate to when you go live. Um, yes, there are just customers that are just floating around whatnot that could just jump into your live, um, but the chances of getting quite a large audience to sell product um, is, is going to be tough, uh, especially when it's a, a brand new product in, in a market like Australia. Um, so what you want to do is you want to have an understanding that it's coming. And I really cannot recommend or stress anything more than to get comfortable having a social media presence and putting your name out there and telling people what you do. You've got a golden opportunity right now to start an Instagram page and get going on your Instagram stories and put up some posts and just let it be known what you do, what you like to buy and sell. And then when WhatNot comes around, you can have an audience to say, hey, I've got a WhatNot uh, page and I'm going live in half an hour, come across. And then you're gonna get all these people come across that follow you, love you, uh, be happy to buy from you because they trust you as a seller and uh, you're going to benefit from it. So, you know, I think it's going to be a really, really big way. You can see eBay as well. They've even come out with the eBay Live recently. Um, so they're that, trying to compete with, uh, with big companies like Whatnot and um, it's for good reason. It's because Whatnot have an awesome structure, an awesome plan to be able to sell items quick, which is the biggest limitation on eBay, which we've just spoken about before I got the butcher's paper or tried to get the butcher's paper. Um, around just buying too much stock that doesn't sell. You can buy a crappy product, which I've seen and I've sold firsthand on Josh's Harry Tornado's uh, WhatNot account over in America earlier this year. I've experienced the platform and you can sell crap. You can sell all of your worst buys and you're still gonna make a couple of dollars on that item and then it's always plus postage on top of that uh, no matter where it goes around the world. So there's just a really big advantage to using WhatNot. I think when it does turn up, uh, I'm probably going to use it in conjunction with eBay. I think my average sale price on eBay, having had a bit of a think, would be $60, $70 items. And then sort of anything below $50 uh, would be whatnot type items because it's really fast transactional type um, you know, transfers of goods. So I can only say that it's turning up soon, maybe next year at some point. There are plans for it to be that way. And uh, I can't wait for it to turn up because I'm going to go pretty hard with it. And you've got the opportunity now with a few months up your sleeve uh, to do the same and be in a really strong position when it does turn up. All right, a bizarre project. Derek, a very, very nice man that follows us on YouTube, on Instagram, um, got in touch with me and he said he had a bunch of hats. And I said, I love selling hats. And he said, well, you might be interested in getting this allotment off me because he's not doing it anymore, basically. Um, he's out of the hat game. He's focusing on other categories. But I think these American hats which are a bit of a mixture of like sports teams. There's some golf hats. There's some, there's a Roland Garros um, tennis hat. So it's all sort of sports style hats. And there are some really, really good ones in here. Um, I, I ended up paying 200 US dollars, including postage. So I paid 300 Australian dollars and we were able to get 60 hats. So it works out to, I think it was like a $4 and 70 cents each, something like that. Um, so I've looked them all out. Um, I will put some B-roll over the 
over the shot so you can get a good close-up look on on all of them but there are quite a lot of like really cool vintage hats like if I, if I pick a few out here like this one here is a Green Bay Packers vintage hat but it's got its game day game day NFL tag on it and it's even got like Walmart there as well three dollars at Walmart back in the day when this would have come out I don't know what year it is but it's vintage it's old um, but it's brand new with tags um, there was this one as well Winston Cup Michigan Racing trucker hat I uh, don't have a date on this one either but it's a made in USA Winston uh, tag on the inside there so that's an old vintage vintage racing hat a few um, Daytona sort of NASCAR hats there as well a lot of Green Bay Packers um, you can see a heap of Green Bay we were looking at this one before Courtney yeah this one's cool so this is a, a Looney Tunes baseball hat for, for a kid and it's a cool five panel hat as well um, says baseball championships on the back there too. So um, that it's got Acme, Acme Kids. Look at that. So cool. Vintage 1991, made in USA. Yeah. 1992 up there as well. So yeah, old school hat there with cool embroidery too. Yeah. Um, we can get some good money in Australia for all of this sort of stuff. So I'm really stoked to have it. Carhartt as well. We've been able to pick up Carhartt hat for four dollars. That's an absolute steal. Uh, and then we've got this one as well, which I like the look of. This was a brand new with tags. Um, there it is there, all the NHL. $3.99 from Goodwill on the tag. Uh, we've got a Stanley Cup Playoffs 2008. Um, I actually don't know who that team is, believe it or not. I'm not big on my hockey. Um, <laughs> Twins Enterprise. So, yeah, there's that. Um, so, 60 hats in total. What we're actually deciding to do, because we are running this Black Friday sale and we're doing it on Instagram. Actually, before I, I pick out the three, Courtney's actually... Oh, yeah. This is Courtney's. That is so cool. Courtney's okay. hat. Let's, I don't usually suit hats, but... Well, oh, just, no, I got a bun. Oh, you got a bun? Yeah. You're going to have to take the bun off or throw it over the oh, top. No. Well, people have got to see. People have got to vote whether or not it suits you or not. My hair's dirty. That's all right. <laughs> You got the whoop band on. Doesn't, oh, no. doesn't it like automatically clean hair? It's still a bit too big. I need to adjust it. But oh, yeah. It's like on my face. <laughs> Look at that. The but gophers. I like it. You can turn around. You can show everyone. There it is. <laughs> University of Minnesota. It's just a good shape, I reckon. Yeah. It sits For low. like a female, I reckon. It's a good, yeah, good chick's hat. I like sits, the colour. Sits nice and low. Not, not a big boxy looking hat. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for modelling that. You can have that. <laughs> thanks for that. There you go. That's your hat. You can... Uh, you can keep that one. Yeah. Uh, this is the best hat, no doubt about it. This is unbelievable. One of the greatest hats I have ever come across. We've got a Super Bowl Championships hat. This is a Green Bay Packers, brand new with tag, logo athletic, 1997, official locker room hat. Um, so yeah, no, that there, I think we could sell, I think there were comps over in the US selling on this hat for about 35 to 40, but I think here in Australia, this sort of hat can go for about maybe 60, $70. Um, so a ridiculous hat, especially being brand new with tags. That was so crazy to see. Mm. Um, we are doing giveaways though. Well, not giveaways, but we're doing 50% off. And yeah. we worked on three that we've decided out of this lot that we're going to pick. And they're actually right here. It's these three. The first one is a Nike golf hat. Uh, it's got the yellow, um, yellow all over, Risen mm. or RZN, and then it's got the, uh, the VRS uh, on the side there as well. Nike Golf, completely genuine, adjustable to fit anyone. Um, we're going to do this for 15, was it? 15 yes. bucks? No, that one was 20, wasn't it? Yeah, 40 we're going to list it for, so 20, 20 bucks. Yeah. 20, yeah, that's right. 20 yeah. bucks on that one there. I think we were doing 15 on this, weren't we? The Knicks, yeah. We're doing a, a New York Knicks. This is a true vintage, uh, not vintage, but it's, it's Mitchell and Ness. Um, so it's a Knicks hat, really good condition as well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this, but it's genuine is what I want to say. Um, so we'd, we'd normally list this up for 30. We're going we're gonna to sell it to any one of you guys that want it for $15. So yeah. 15 on a New York Knicks. And then my absolute favorite... This one here, we have a vintage Green Bay Packers. This one is going to be up for grabs as well. It's got the NFL game day tags, brand new as well. It's got the Walmart $3 tag there. Um, this one, we're going to do for $25, aren't we? Yeah. Because it was going to be $50. Yes. Yeah. We're going to list it for $50, but we're going to list it yeah. for $25 for any one of you guys. Yeah. Um, so there's your three hats that are up for grabs in today's video. I reckon they're all, they're all like new. Yeah, they are. I reckon they're going to go pretty quick because they're a pretty damn good price. What have you got there, Courtney? I don't know. It's 
Spaghetti bolognese. It's 3.30. Yeah, but it's going to be dinner and lunch. Oh, goodness. It's a big... It's huge. Yeah, spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. Any any veggies in there? Yep. Um, capsicum, onion, mushroom, zucchini. Oh, that sounds lovely. Mm. Very good. Oh, as you were. Sorry about that. Yeah, I had some energy to cook, so... Um... You yeah, absolutely smashed it. Yeah. The other question that we had in our... Um, in our Instagram questions was around travel and what we're doing next year. And they said that we should plan a trip to New Zealand. Yeah. Which I think could be a good substitute for two years in America. I think we should go somewhere else next year. So I think New Zealand could be, could be a pretty cool option. Yeah. Um, I also think doing a camper van around Australia is a good option. Oh, I can't do it. Like, Why? Because I would need like quiet, quite a crazy camper van. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep the fort down here. This but I is, could definitely do New Zealand. This is the whoop mentality. Yeah, nah. At least don't camp about no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually do, but like, nah. We need to do Sydney. We do need to see Sydney. New Zealand. Sydney and New Zealand would be very good to tick off. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did the last meetup we did was here on the Gold Coast earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that last year we did WA and Melbourne. Mm. So Sydney would be Definitely one to tick off. Yeah. Um, but yes. Whereabouts in New Zealand? Yeah. Let us know in New Zealand. What? What's? I've, ne I've Have you been? Yeah, I've done the South Island a few times. South. Yeah. It's I've like never Christ been. Church and Queenstown and stuff. Yeah, I have never been to New Zealand. We could go when it snows and do a snowboarding meetup. Oh. I'm just planning the trip. <laughs> mid mid next year. Yeah. July, mid next year, July snow August. trip plus thrifting. That would be pretty sick. Yeah, that would be a cool vlog. And what if we teed it up with a few people to come over and do a big... They come over too. Some viewers. Oh, yeah. Like we all plan a big yeah. American trip. Um, New Zealand trip. Yeah. There you go. There's some thoughts. <laughs> I hadn't been thinking about that, but New Zealand, that could be something on the cards. Courtney's about to eat her spaghetti. And uh, I'm about to go and edit this video. That'll just about do us for today, guys. Uh, appreciate you being here. 25,000 subs. We're about 700 subs away, Courtney. I'm oh, sorry, I got it at the wrong time. <laughs> we're, uh, we're about 700 subs away, so make sure you hit the sub button. Um, we've got a lot of hats to list up and a lot of stuff hopefully to sell over the next few days. So we're out of here. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday, whether it be a flea market video or whether it be a big recap of Black Friday or two days worth of Black Friday. I'm not 100% sure on the content schedule just yet, um, but there'll be another video out in three or four days' time, I'd say. Um, so we'll see you then. Bye.